Welcome back to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to say that Activision Blizzard is bad. Ah, uh, yep, you bad. heard it here. Heard, bad. You heard it here first, folks. A company that's being sued by both the state of California <laughs> and the U.S. federal government is bad. <laughs> that's an easy conclusion. Uh, I don't know how we keep up this bravery every single week, but here we are, Lawrence. We're the bravest. Someone's got to call it like it is, Bruce. <laughs> Two white dudes in black shirts. We're the bravest. Hey, speaking of brave white dudes, it's pretty astounding that Activision Blizzard can keep all this <laughs> shit up, too. I know they right. Jesus Christ. You're not wrong. It's uh, just going to be like this from now on, I think. Um, they are at the point where their sexual harassment lawsuits are interfering with their other sexual harassment lawsuits now. <laughs> That's just ridiculous and insane and terrible, by yeah. the way. And that's according to the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, or the DFEH, <laughs> who filed a motion this week claiming that the pending settlement between Activision Blizzard and the United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, mm -hmm. that's at the federal level, stands to destroy the very evidence that the DFEH needs to prosecute its case. Okay, all right. So to put it another way, Activision Blizzard is allegedly using the settlement terms of one lawsuit to destroy relevant evidence in another lawsuit. Jeez. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't. I Can you? That I, sounds illegal to me. I'm always fascinated. And this is just like, this is how people get ahead in business is they are always looking for an angle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would think I'm this kind of idiot where if I get sued by the U.S. federal government, I'm like, well, <laughs> boys, I'm sorry. The sexual harassment was fun, but I guess it's over now. We, we got to stop it. <laughs> no. They're like, what if we use this to delete all the other sexual harassment we did? It's pretty smart. Uh -huh, sure, why not? Lawyer, uh -huh. Or it's, you know, pretty evil if you have a functioning conscience. Which apparently those lawyers do not. Uh, Kotaku reported the filing on October 7th, which occurred in response to the aforementioned settlement between Activision Blizzard and the US EEOC, or the federal government. Which, you know, itself was honestly kind of a surprise, because we only recently learned that the state of California was suing Activision <laughs> yeah, Blizzard. Just a few uh, months ago, yeah. Yeah, it turns out the U.S. federal government was investigating them this whole time, too. Oh, wow. Starting in 2018, to be specific. They just kept it more quiet. Oh, all right. Well, good for them, actually. Uh, and just like the state of California, the EEOC found enough evidence in their investigation to press charges, which they did on September 27th, 2021. Filed in California State, U.S. EEOC versus Activision Blizzard accuses the company of knowingly participating in sexual harassment against women and failing to take any remedy once employees complained. Also, just like the state of California suit, probably. Mm -hmm. Activision Blizzard announced almost immediately after the lawsuit becoming public knowledge that they've reached a settlement. Like, the same day immediately. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was right away. Uh, also, on September 27th, Activision Blizzard announced that they've reached a settlement with the EEOC, which amounts to an $18 million fund to compensate and make amends to eligible claimants. Wow, $18 million. That's more than 17 I mean, it sounds like a lot of money. Is it, though? Mm, no, it's uh, not. <laughs> it's really not. Yeah. Uh, so just to put it in compare, here's some fun numbers. Just sure. Some fun numbers. I love fun numbers. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, uh, he got voted a $155 million compensation package bonus that was approved by Activision stockholders in June. Wait, wait, wait. Just for, just for the CEO? Yeah, the bonus. Just for this year. Or last year, technically. Just 155 million. Mm -hmm. It's a compensation package, Bruce. It's not all money. Some of it's stocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Activision Blizzard's latest fiscal quarter yielded 2.29 million. Bill no billion. Oh. 2.29 billion in revenue. Yeah. So 18 million out of 2.29 billion. What's the percentage there? It's real tiny. Yeah, it's pretty so, small. <laughs> comparatively, uh, the entire fund, all of it, set aside to pay out every harassed employee since the company's founding, is 11 percent of the CEO's bonus <laughs> for a single year. Okay. <laughs> it's also 0.7 percent uh -huh. of a single quarter of the company's operating revenue. Right, and the quarter is three months. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, this is the cold hard math of how work is done in America. Exploit workers, pocket the money, and settle for pennies on the dollar decades down the road. Like I've said, yeah. over and over and over. You were part of this beautiful cycle, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. The most American of all of us. <laughs> and apparently the American way is also to use that settlement to weasel out of other lawsuits. Which I, uh, this guy, this has to be illegal. Uh, the, the US federal government might be fine with this teeny slap on the wrist, but the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing still wants a piece of the action. Uh, absolutely. And Good for them. And they should, yeah. Please God. So they jumped in to slow everything down this week, noting that a condition of the settlement between Activision Blizzard and the US EEOC would allow Blizzard to, quote, remove from the personnel files of each eligible claimant any references to the allegations related to sexual harassment, pregnancy discrimination, and or related retaliation. 
That's all I can say to that. Uh, <laughs> so basically, if Activision Blizzard pegs you off, they get to erase the record that you ever complained about sexual harassment in the first place. So they can turn around to the California DFEH and show, well, there's no record of sexual harassment happening. Look at the books. <laughs> what do the books say? <laughs> Jeez. So the order does stipulate that Activision Blizzard has to maintain their records, quote, in order to effectuate this decree. Okay. Though, it suspiciously and likely intentionally doesn't mention any other decree or legal action, so... You know. <laughs> All right. Uh, the California DFEH moved pretty fast on this one, too. According to the filing, the DFEH met with both Activision Blizzard and the EEOC on October 5th, just a week and a day after the lawsuit and settlement were publicly announced. Uh, apparently, the DFEH would normally have to wait seven days from this meeting to file an intervention, but they jumped the wait and filed the motion ex parte due to the potential harm this settlement would have on their lawsuit. Yep, and that's that's where we're at now. Okay. State of California is trying to intervene in a hushed settlement between Activision Blizzard and the U.S. federal government all over their reoccurring sexual harassment of women. Yikes. That's a big old, that's a big old yikes all the way around. And, I, and, and we don't, we, I don't want to minimize this, by the way. Uh, when we say big old yikes, we're kind of joking around about it. I'm not going to minimize this. This is terrible for the company. It's terrible for all the people that had to go through it. Uh, it's trash. So, and that's why I was saying start cutting heads mm -hmm. a few months ago. Uh, and I don't know if they've done yeah, that. Yeah, realistically, it, it's hard to imagine that happening. When you, when the people who did the thing are also responsible for punishing the people who did the thing, <laughs> turns out they just look in the mirror and say everything's fine. <laughs> So if we, if we sound cynical towards Activision Blizzard in this report, well, it's because Activision Blizzard has shown a legacy of underhanded legal tactics in the months leading up to this. Yeah, and, and to kind of piggyback off what you were yeah, saying, yeah. we're talking about the story from a business perspective because sure. that's how Activision Blizzard is treating it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there is, there's certainly a human factor there that we're not acknowledging in all of this. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the way we're talking about it, it's cynical. It's, it's kind of irreverent. We're kind of over companies acting this way, and yeah. that's how we're choosing to ex uh, express ourselves. Mm -hmm. But certainly having been a part of that, as Bruce has personally, I, well, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, we certainly empathize with people who are trapped in the middle of it. But yeah. as, you know, two white dudes, we can't... That's not our place to talk about, I guess <laughs> right, is what I'd say. Right, and, and, and honestly, I think we did a lot of the... We reported on the human factor months ago when this first broke. Uh, so you should absolutely go back and watch that show too, because that's, I think, we were a lot more disgusted and just... We, again, just like uh, have some empathy for your fellow yeah. man. Just... Hopefully, by this point, the people who are most affected have found some amount of, of vindication, and and most importantly, have maybe taken a month off. Yes, just collect yeah. collect some nice paychecks, play some World of Warcraft on the clock. <laughs> so a little over a month ago, the DFEH accused Activision Blizzard of going to unsavory lengths to destroy or deny access to potentially incriminating material, which we reported on, uh, going so far as to shred paper evidence and delete emails they were legally required to maintain. Good stuff. Yeah, one of uh, Activision Blizzard's sneakiest moves, and this is wild. And this is according to the DFEH's filings, was to use lawyers in their internal audits and investigations, and that includes the hiring of the law firm Wilmer Hale, once the DFEH lawsuit went public. They announced that, like, immediately. Yeah, that's right. Activision Blizzard claimed that since the related parties talked to lawyers during their investigations, of course, as they were directed to, yeah. that all information found in that internal investigation is confidential under client attorney privilege. Meaning they don't have to turn it over to state investigators. Which they do, but all they have to do is say they don't, and then they don't, and then three <laughs> years down the line, the DFEH is saying like, hey! <laughs> yeah. And that's it. That's, that's basically it. So, yeah. yeah. So not only is Activision Blizzard destroying and suppressing evidence, but they're also angling on their pitifully small federal settlement to eliminate a lion's share of the actual evidence of their wrongdoing. That's right. So other regulatory bodies can't come after them as well. Allegedly. Sure, allegedly. allegedly. You, gotta, you gotta throw that one in. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we gotta be responsible reporters here. Remind everyone, these are just allegations. Yeah. Uh, but for real, there's no way to cut announcing a tiny-ass settlement on the same day a lawsuit is filed as anything other than corporate maneuvering. And that's all this is. Yeah, at best. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. that's pretty scummy. Anyway. Yeah. So if there's any doubt, yeah, Activision Blizzard, they're, they're a corporation. And they're in, <laughs> they're in Corpo Sleaze mode. It happens to them all. Uh, it, really, it does. It yeah. does. It does. And if, any, if anybody thinks that it doesn't happen to every single corporation that we experience on a daily basis, it does. I'm sorry. There doesn't really seem to be any huge consequences for them at the moment, though, aside from loads of bad PR, uh, which we've been part of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> while all this goes on, the revenues are actually up year over year. Mm -hmm. uh, their stock price hasn't shifted really as a result either. Activision Blizzard is currently trading at $77 at the time of writing compared to $77 exactly one year ago. Now they've they've had a big rise and fall in the in the year since. Yeah, they did, yeah. 
But that's not tied to any of these lawsuits. All of those dates of the huge jumps or drops, those are kind of just other market it, factors. It's generally market movement. Um, and that's around the same time. That's what happens. Usually around this time every year, stocks go down. Uh, likely because investors understand how this story goes, a lawsuit just means that there'll be a laughably small settlement, like we talked about, either immediately or a few years down the line. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I think the real story here, the one that we can't see, and this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, Activision Blizzard's probably suffering a lot harder in staffing and recruitment right now. Yep, yep. Uh, there have already been a series of very high-level departures at the company since the lawsuit started falling like rain, uh, including former president J. Allen Brack, former Diablo 4 game director Luis Barriga, and Overwatch executive producer Chaco Sunny, who themselves were an interim replacement for former Overwatch 2 game director Jeff Kaplan, That's right. who left back in April. I, uh, I'm not going to speculate. Maybe though, maybe Kaplan knew a little bit about. I'm probably what I was yeah, uh, those are just the higher profile departures Blizzard has to actually say something about. You can bet countless other employees have had enough. Just quit for good. Uh, legions of producers, artists, coders, audio engineers, you name it. Anyone that remembers how games are made, there, how to use back end systems, how to update the ticket tracking, all that stuff, just evaporated in a manner of months. Uh, I'm sure that's happened, and I've, I've seen it on Twitter. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's especially damaging, I feel like, at a company like Blizzard Entertainment that's been around for so long. Yeah. They probably have internal tools that were made sure. in, like, 2004 yeah. that Stan knows how to use. Yeah. And Stan just quit. <laughs> and, like, no one else really thought about it. And now it's a week later and Stan's not there anymore and no one knows how to do this thing. So that that can have real rip, ricocheting costs. And it starts happening at every department at every level once people just start falling out that's so right yeah. it's gonna be rough uh it's not like blizzard can just go out and rehire those roles either like lawrence was just talking about not with this non-stop parade of negative headlines either just telling the world just how soulless this company is uh to work for i mean if i was seeing this about my own company again we i know it exists for every company but seeing it in the wild in the in the public that's enough to, for me to be like i gotta find another job yeah like as soon as possible or if you're hunting for a job to just not even take an interview from a company like that yeah, that's true. They yeah. were pretty notorious for underpaying too, just because they were Blizzard and people wanted to work there. Uh -oh, they can't anymore. do that anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> on a, on a baseline, they have to like start matching or overpaying people to work there, and that's going to cut into their profits. It's kind of like that. Absolutely. See, so yeah, ultimately, games are multi-year projects. They rely on the accumulated experience of everyone involved to proceed smoothly. Mm -hmm. We can assume, I think, pretty safely at this point, that Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 have already experienced a ton of developer churn since all of this broke out, yeah. which will likely maybe delay their, well, I mean, pretty definitely de delay their releases and impact their quality. Yep. Now, to disclose again, we're not saying that it should be any other way. No, no, uh, no. Yeah, this is a well earned. Yeah, well earned by the people. Take the all company. the delays. It's it's a human factor. Yeah. Again, talking about it from the business side of things, this is what's eventually going to impact their bottom line, and eventually make investors care, and thus eventually make executives care. That's right. That's kind of the, the tracking we're trying to do here. Yeah, and Blizzard, of course, has a new problem to worry about with the breakout success of Amazon Games. New World. Yeah. Which is a good video game, by the way. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's really uh, fun. So this is one of the, th like, once companies have safe revenue, that's when things start to get a little weird. And so, that's what happened. Yeah. World of Warcraft has been Blizzard Entertainment's monetary lifeline. It's just bucket loads of money every month, and they don't, <laughs> like, they have to make expansions. Maintenance, stuff like that. But... Yeah, but they're not as beholden to releasing new products mm -hmm. to bring in revenue. Yeah. Uh, so they've been able to not ship new titles for years and still bring in lots of revenue and look really healthy. So now they're in a position of not really being able to ship a new game because of what Lawrence just talked about. They can't really hire people to get their production back on track because of what we just talked about. And competitors like New World and Final Fantasy XIV are threatening to steal their cash cow or probably are right now. Yeah, maybe. I. It's tough because Blizzard stopped saying how many subscribers they have. Oh. Probably because it's going down. Yeah. <laughs> but that makes it really hard to compare. Who knows? I, I saw New World was getting close to a million concurrent players on Steam. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Which is awesome, but who knows? how that actually stacks up to World of Warcraft's current subscriber base. Good point. World of Warcraft could have like 30 million yeah. uh, mm -hmm. monthly subs. We don't know, so. Wow, jeez. They do have one thing going for them though. Ports! Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, they they just released Diablo 2 Resurrected. It's uh, good. Which was technically made by another studio. So. Vicarious Vision. Yeah, yeah, which is now Blizzard. Well, yeah. So yeah, Blizzard has a pretty deep catalog of well-loved games that they can farm out for the remaster treatment, sure. yeah. uh, which can give them annual releases for a few years yet while hopefully they get their internal staffing issues sorted out and maybe kick all the fucking sexual harassers to the curb. <laughs> I mean, if they haven't already done that, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> you know, like, get rid of the people that were problems. 
It's not hard here. Uh, so in all likelihood, Blizzard's going the way of Bioware. Paralyzed by staff departures and employee mistreatment, dropping a series of remakes and remasters while it tries to find its footing again. Uh, I Just like anywhere else, I always hope that Blizzard or Bioware or anybody else reaches the same heights that they were at. I really do. Uh, and I, uh, without the toxicity <laughs> yes. of the terrible work environment. Yeah, it's it's tough. And and another thing to keep in mind is it's just a name at this point. Uh, like, who's even left at Blizzard that founded it or right. has had worked yeah. there ten years ago? So you know, it, I can understand being attached to a name and a brand and an experience, but unfortunately, it's like, will they come back? Well, they're already dead. But another crew might come in with some cool ideas, iterate on what's there, and mm -hmm. give us like a the next generation kind of thing. Yeah. So that's I think what what's worth hoping for, and certainly for all the people who are you know, have families and lives and they can't just quit and move somewhere and uproot their entire existence for that. That's right. Yeah, I'm always hoping for the most constructive outcome. Yep, bottom line, we really just pull for the people there uh, that are working their butts off um, and just doing doing good work, being good people uh, at Blizzard. And that's one of the reasons that we played Diablos because we wanted to support the good people there. Uh, and I just begging the leadership over at Blizzard to just get rid of the shit. It's not hard. It's really not hard. Just get rid of it. Well said. <laughs>